So G4 has officially closed. G4 is over. The long-awaited return didn't do very well. And here's my thoughts on why that was. So a lot of you guys reached out to me and wanted to know my personal opinion on the G4 issues that was going on with Comcast pulling the G4 network, the YouTube channel, the revival down. Um, this is coming from Deadline right now. Comcast pulls the plug on the G4 TV, ending the comeback, uh, trying for gamer-focused network. And a lot of people did reach out to me because they wanted to know my thoughts on everything that was going on with G4 because I did follow the Frost stuff. And to be honest with you, the Frost stuff was the beginning of the end. I don't think G4, the, the revival, was going to last anyway. I just think the Frost burst the frost rant just sped up the process and the reason why i'm saying that uh, i feel like it was gonna end anyway was because whenever you have these youtube channels come in or, or for, for example here's the thing right there are tons of people that do video game content that i follow that have great quality great shows and it's fantastic to watch and i watch them every single day i, I make my cup of coffee i put on let's say spawn wave or rgt 85 or player essence or something like that and i watch and get my daily video game news you know over on the movie side i, I turn to john campia and all that stuff and i get my daily dose of media news and G4, when G4 first came out, their YouTube wasn't really a thing. Now everybody and their mom, like, look at my fat ass. I have a camera. I can talk about pretty much anything, you know? So you can go anywhere to get video game news and content. So when G4 decided they wanted to come back and they got, you know, the completionist and Adam Sessler back and, they, and, and they're paying these people premium prices to host these shows not including the manpower that is taken to piece together the clips do the editing the researching the resources and all that stuff it comes very very pricey look at something like what happened with collider what used to be amc movie talk that john campia helped create with you know dennis zen and all that stuff you know you have mark fernandez he purchased um collider and then he ran it into the ground he couldn't afford to pay all these people, so he had to start laying people off. You've seen him like lay off Ashley Mova and all those, and you know, um, Sinead DeFree and all those, right? He had to start laying people off because he couldn't afford it because they were trying to go so high production, you know, doing these these shows where they go to the comic shop and do all this stuff, and they were, they were doing too many shows, and it was costing too much time with cameramen, with editing and all that stuff that they couldn't really afford it. One reason why John Campia is successful today was after he left Collider, he went solo for a very long time and he was making tons of money because he had the following, the fan base, and it was a very small production. And even now when he starts bringing new people on, again, it's a very small production compared to what Collider and AMC Movie Talk and all that stuff. So when G4 came back, they wanted to go all like high production, have all these shows and all this stuff, and that costs us a lot of money. And when you're pulling in YouTube views, YouTube view like if you're if you're monetized you know you don't make that much money from YouTube right like it's a very very small amount of money that you make from YouTube that's one reason why a lot of these high production shows don't really work because they think they're gonna go in like it's a cable television and you think you're gonna get paid like you do with advertisement and stuff like that and it's a much different way of going about it the thing was when Frost came out and did her giant ramp it just sped up the process so the little bit of viewers that they did did have they lost because she decided hey we're going to attack the fan base that is watching us rather than sit there and try to build a loyal fan base they allowed their politics and their own personal beliefs to get in the way of doing a job i've worked retail for almost 20 years at walmart i hated 90 percent of the twinkle toe cocksuckers that went into walmart i will t i could i have stories for days whether we're talking about the mismanagement behind the scene or the old white people who think that they are like god sent to everybody that everything revolves around them they are entitled people right like i can go on for days right but i never insulted the customers to their face i never said listen here you old fuck how about you go to home and eat your prunes and go to bed you don't do that because if everybody would attack their customers then the the store would be out of business 
You know, if McDonald's made fun of their customers, McDonald's would be out of business. If Goodyear made fun of their customers, they wouldn't be able to sell tires. So when you sit there and you make fun of your viewers, calling them all sexist and male chauvinist and all this stuff, uh, you know, you're going to lose your vo your your viewership. That's, no one wants to watch a show where they're being criticized. Nobody wants to go to a place where they're being criticized. So G4, I feel, was going to fail anyway just because of everybody on their mama being everybody and their mama being able to do their own YouTube content. Like I said, Spawn Wave, RGT85, you know, Player Essence, you have Wolf Den, you got like Kevin K. Like there's all kinds of different YouTubers. Like the completionist himself has a very, very successful and profitable YouTube channel. He doesn't need G4, but he was the host on G4, and you know they had to pay him pretty good money for him to be one of the hosts on G4. So everybody goes to other YouTubers where they get honest opinions on stuff. Right now, the Bayonetta 3 topic is all over the internet. Should you boycott it? Should you not boycott it? People are going insane about this thing, and you can't go to G4 and expect to get truthful opinions on it because they allow their politics to get in the way. Whereas here on YouTube, you go to YouTubers like me, like you, and you get honest opinions and they don't allow their politics to get in the way. So G4, I feel was inevitably going to close down anyway, but thanks to Frost's rant, it just ended much sooner than it would have if it never happened. And unfortunately, she really sped up the process. But that's just my take on it. I wonder what you guys think. Be sure to leave those comments in the comment box below. Smash that like and subscribe button. Until next time, as always, I'm Robert Storms, and that's my opinion.